Life always takes you to different routes that you aren't familiar with. Just when you think it's all done, well, that might be the instance when you realize that it's just the beginning. What will you call a person who was responsible for a few people's deaths, but in the end saved a large chunk of humans by giving up his life? Well, if you're still unaware of this character, then stick with us till the end to get to know all about Dr. Octopus. Do you want to play a game? Welcome back to Evo Chronicles, where we showcase the evolution of movies, video games, and characters. And in this video, we are going to see the evolution of Dr. Octopus. Looks like we got competition. Who is this guy? Dr. Otto Gunther Octavius was a brilliant scientist who worked towards researching and building a sustainable fusion power reactor. Yes, my design to initiate and sustain fusion. During his career, he made the acquaintance of Norman Osborn, the founder and CEO of Oscorp. His brilliance was above par with all the expectations, and he just stood apart with his excellence. Intelligence is not a privilege, it's a gift, and you use it for the good of mankind. He always wished to do good for mankind, but somehow fails in doing so when he was at the biggest stage of invention. You can specifically say that it is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Keep that in mind, as no such character as an individual exists in the human world, but surely he does exist in the spider world. What exactly happened which turned him into a villain? Mainly called as Doc, he marked his presence in Spider-Man 2 as the powerful villain who needs to be stopped. And there, Peter set himself on a mission to oppose him. But before that, he too had a decent, normal life that fell apart like a falling deck of cards. After graduating MIT, Otto was hired by the U.S. Atomic Research Center. To help manipulate radioactive substances from a safe distance, Otto constructed a chest harness controlling four mechanical, tentacle-like arms, earning him the nickname Dr. Octopus. Octavius meets Peter Parker, who's an admirer of his work and is the alter ego of Spider-Man, and easily befriended him to build his reactor and successfully create and sustain the fusion reaction. Octavius developed a set of artificially intelligent mechanical arms and a neural inhibitor chip to prevent the advanced AI of the arms from influencing his mind. On the day of the experiment, Peter, Harry, and a bunch of journalists and Oscorp associates attend Otto's experiment. Doctor, we have a successful fusion reaction. During the experiment, however, things went wrong as the fusion reactor started dragging and consuming magnets. Keep calm! It's only a spike! It'll soon stabilize! But Otto refuses to halt it as the reactor overloads and becomes unstable, feeling that he can control it, despite Harry's angry demands to shut it off. It'll stabilize! It's under control! I'm in charge here! His mechanical arms were permanently bonded to his spinal column, and the neural inhibitor chip was destroyed. Through the loss of his inhibitor chip, Octavus started hearing the voices of his arms within his head. He gets unconscious as he even sees the death of his wife in front of his wide eyes. He was rushed to the hospital, but that was when he realized his experiment had totally backfired. The tentacles developed their own ability to move at will and brutally killed most of the surgeons. Octavius escapes and hides out in an abandoned warehouse by the waterfront. The uncontrolled AI within his arms convince him to finish the experiment which he started by stealing money and buying the necessary technology he needs to do so. In the process, he came across the mighty Spider-Man who always tried to stop him. They fight hard against each other, but because of Doc's arms he has become much more powerful and almost defeats Spider-Man in the battle. But our hero never gave up and fought back with all his power to stop Doc Ock from creating more havoc. They met in the final battle, and this was when Doc turned into an anti-hero. Spider-Man finds Dr. Octopus in the abandoned warehouse on the waterfront where he's restarted his fusion experiment. As they fight, the fusion reactor grows more and more and starts dragging every magnet of New York City towards itself. After battling with Dr. Octopus, Spider-Man manages to stun him with an electric shock. Spider-Man makes Doc realize how he taught him all about intelligence. 
You once spoke to me about intelligence. That it was a gift to be used for the good of mankind. Privilege. He always used to say to Peter that intelligence is a gift and that they must use it for the good of mankind. Returned to his senses by the shock, Doc tells Peter that the fusion reactor can't be shut down anymore, and that the only solution is to sink it. Spider-Man tries to go to do so, but Otto stops him, insisting he do so. I'll do it. Octavius proceeds to use his mechanical tentacles to collapse the floor of the building, successfully drowning the fusion device at the cost of his own life, declaring that he would not die like a monster. This was the moment when he aroused sympathy in all the viewers' hearts who were characterizing him as the darkest hero. To save the world, he just gave up his own life. When we look in a broader way, we get a realization that all the devastation which he did was just because of the arms which got connected to him. It forced his brain to act according to their desires. In the whole process, if we just separate and look at him as a human, he never wanted to harm anyone. Rather, he always wanted to help mankind. We all thought that it was the end of one of the darkest characters and a powerful villain of Spider-Man. But to our surprise, there was something new that came up without even the smallest of indications. Doc's resurrection in Spider-Man No Way Home. Many years after Octavius' death, a botched spell by Dr. Stephen Strange transports Octavius into an alternate reality from moments before his death specifically from when he was strangling Peter before he had managed to break through to Octavius. Boom. He had been witnessed by the viewers who thought that the last encounter was the end of Doc. He came to an alternate reality just before his death. Spider-Man was trying to stop my fusion reactor. So I stopped him. I had him by the throat. And then I... And then I was here. Which made the facts clear that his reappearance was as a villain again. He was captured along with other villains with whom Spider-Man fought in different universes. Octavius is captured and imprisoned by the alternate Peter and resists his efforts to cure him. The alternate Peter saved Octavius by using Stark Tech to create a new inhibitor chip for him, restoring Octavius's control over his mind and his mechanical arms. Otto. Yes. Norman. It's me. From that point onwards, he started helping Peter to cure other villains too. But the agony was by Peter's side as he lost his aunt because of Norman Osborn. In the final battle, when all the villains turned against Peter, Doc too had a hand in it. Doc said that he stood by the villain's side, which was an act as he immediately turned on Electro, tearing the arc reactor from his chest and replacing it with the device that Peter had created to cure him, draining Electro of his powers. Octavius examines the arc reactor, recognizing it as the kind of fusion power that he had dreamed of creating with his doomed fusion project. Peter? Otto. He even met his universe's Peter Parker, who came in aid. Well, it's good to see you, dear boy. It's good to see you. He subsequently returned to his own reality by Strange with the Arc Reactor in his possession, potentially allowing him to achieve his dream of providing the world with an infinite fusion-based source of energy through safer and more efficient means. Even though he had a negative presence all the time, as it's been said, it's all well that ends well, he saved the entire city when needed the most. And that's why he stood out as an anti-hero. Well, that's all about Dr. Octopus that you need to know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Evo Chronicles and hit the notification bell so that you can always be notified by our regular updates. We'll be back soon to enlighten you with another character. Until then, stay connected.